Welcome back to the week eight Thursday night preview. Is it week eight? Yeah. Halfway. Crazy. Right away. Not yet halfway. Well, you know. Close enough to Yeah, I mean, you were there. Uh, I know we say this every week, but this one is actually the worst fucking game ever. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> we You're got the kidding. Dolphins at the Ravens. Two of the most like... It's going to be a clunker. It's it's going to be 3-0 is what it's going to be. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be 9-0 because fucking Justin Tucker is going to hit a bunch of field goals. Not if Matt Morris I'm going to say about that. I don't know. Uh, so, you know, the Ravens, I wanted to talk about how they haven't scored a touchdown in like two weeks. They didn't throw a touchdown last week. They scored two they, special team touchdowns. They threw one on the literal last play of the game. Yeah, which, uh, which yes. fired, fired me up because... So, if you guys watched the Plays and Fades video, cheap plug, last week, I had the Vikings defense, solid throughout, and then a meaningless touchdown just costs you six points. Yeah. Whether you're playing regular fantasy or DFS. And I'm like, dude, what? Can, can we do something where we adjust the stats a little bit? Because a garbage <laughs> touchdown when a team is down three scores, it, sh- it shouldn't ruin your defensive performance. And, yes, it upset me and it cost me some money. <laughs> Nothing will grind your gears more like a last-second score in any football game. Yo, it's That affects you fantasy-wise. But, I mean, the Ravens have been exactly what I've been saying, like, time and time and again, that no one on this offense is exciting. There's no explosive players that I'm like, oh, we got to watch out for this guy. And it shows. They're not scoring. They're not fucking really moving the ball like crazy. And the Vikings defense, hammer that, by the way. Five and a half. How you doing? Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. My, my only pick that I went on. <laughs> Not me on that one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, so the Dolphins last week ended up being the Jets. They got let back in that game. Mm. Uh, Jay Cutler goes down, and uh, we have Matt Moore. So are, do you think the Dolphins are like better off with Matt Moore, or what's going on? Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was a little loud, but uh, I don't know. Matt Moore like injected life into that team. He came in down 28-14, bought them back in the fourth quarter alone, scored 17 points. Parky wound up hitting the game-winning field goal. But, you know, since week one, Jay Cutler hasn't thrown the ball. He hasn't averaged more than six yards per attempt. Matt Moore came in and averaged nine yards per attempt just in that one quarter or quarter and a half, whatever you want to call it. So they're, they're, I think that it's going to air it out more. I got Devontae Parker on the men. He's coming mm. back. But uh, Kenny Stills was stretching the field out. He had that long 30-yard touchdown. And I think it might be able to get a Jai going, you know, if people are going to have to start respecting the throw down field more. Less guys in the box. A guy possibly going. He's getting the volume. Yeah. Can he get going for them? They're four and two, man. They're looking good. That was gonna right? say it's so crazy that they're should, four and two. I shouldn't say they're looking good because no one's really talking about that. And if you saw Jarvis Landry's yeah, his post game, big post game, he's like, yo, someone start talking about us and respecting us because we're four and two. Do you respect them though? They beat the Falcons. They they won three in a row. Yeah. Right. And, they and should, but there's they should have lost that game against the Jets. The Jets were up fourteen you could say they the entire have lost game against the Falcons too. Nah, yeah, yeah. But he brings up a good point: how Matt Moore came in and injected life in them, and you right. kind of saw that with everybody. Everybody just got fired up, and it got them going. And you're down two touchdowns to a division opponent who always plays them tough. I remember when looking at the line for that game last week, I actually told you I was like, "Yo, I kind of like that Jet." Who pick. already beat them this year? Once. Who, who beat them already? And guys like Landry. Solid. He scored a touchdown in three straight games. Uh, he's getting a shitload of targets, especially with Devontae pa- Parker being out. Mm-hmm. Julius Thomas got involved also. And I, I just think from watching them on the sideline, because we were lucky enough to watch that game because we're from New York, so they showed right. the Jet game. And everybody just seemed into it. Like down two touchdowns, Matt Moore came in, and they're just like riled up and fired up and ready to go. I, 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 I've, the line in this game is three. The Dolphins are getting three because they're on the road. And and I actually was telling you guys before we started breaking down this game, right away Vegas put a line out on this game. So what that tells you is usually when a quarterback goes down and it's one of those questionable tags where, you know, Cutler broke his ribs, but we've seen a lot of guys play with a, a minor injury or an injury like that. Right. And right away they just put up the line. So it just goes to tell you that there's not – Vegas doesn't see Cutler as being that important to this where it's not like Aaron Rodgers is going to be missing and you got to wait to see the announcement or, or like an Andrew Luck. It's like with Cutler, like, ah, you know, we'll just give Baltimore three points for being the road team. All right. I, I think the Dolphins are going to run away with this one. I have no faith in the, in the, in the Ravens anymore. I think that there's just nothing that – how could you? There's nothing on that offense that makes me feel like they can score. Like you said, that besides that offensive touchdown, they have one touchdown in the last five weeks. Or passing touchdown anyway. Right. Right. Buck Allen's leading the team in targets. He had double-digit targets this week out of the backfield. 
There's nothing out wide for them. Mike Wallace got leveled on one play. I think uh, Sandejo on Minnesota is getting suspended he from is. that last I checked. For like code of conduct. Oh, he got which knocked was, out. Yeah, I so, remember that. Yeah. And, and look, they're playing on Thursday. So if he, if he's in concussion protocol, I doubt that he's going to be cleared. You, Macklin missed last week. Campanero is going to be their number one receiver. And this guy, Chris Moore, who came in and saw like eight yeah. targets out of nowhere. He's, he's the, the one who scored the touchdown. Yeah, he scored the yeah. touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> son of a. <laughs> son of a. Um. Yeah, but I I think if if I'm going I'm going Dolphins in this one just because like you said uh, we've seen what happens when teams lose a certain player either to someone gets traded or they lose like you know someone who's like a cancer to the team or they get a new offensive coordinator or a head coach gets fired people, they respond just yeah. a different ways and, and a change it, a change of, yeah a change so they they have Matt Moore now and we saw they were fired up even though they were down they came back and and, and won that game. And Jarvis Landry afterwards, when you just see his post game speech where he's just like fired up, it's like, yo, no, someone's like respect us. You know what I'm saying? Like we're four and two, which is crazy. I, if you even think about it, you're like, yo, there's no way that the Dolphins are four and two, but they're four and two. They won three in a row. They, they were one and two. So, so you put that team who's coming off a, a, a big win, you know what I mean? And, and, and the way that they won with the new guy in and just and, fired and up. Coming like, back okay. down two touchdowns against a division rival. Right. So you put that team against the Ravens. Who can't get anything going in the past two, three weeks, four weeks, whatever the fuck it's been? They can't get anything going. I think the Dolphins should have been favored in this in this game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the Ravens being two and zero is a long afterthought right now. Yeah, right. They started the season two and zero. Right. They beat the Bengals and the Browns, two division games. Now, forget it. What's there to talk and about? And look them? at the Bengals and the Browns. Right. They're on two, both teams, right? But I'm talking about to keep it Dolphins and uh, Ravens. They're on two different like trajectories right now. You know, it's two and zero, oh, one and four the last three games. They the Dolphins started one and two. They're three and zero oh the last three games. So we'll see. The Dolphins shut down the Jets in that fourth quarter. The defense held the Jets to negative four yards of total offense. Wow. So that was a huge part of them coming back. Right when Matt Moore came in. Yeah, yeah. It, like it coincides, like you said, yo. You got to change. Like it's just. A sign of life like you know like all right let's go do this and and that's what they did and i think it carries over in the short week if you guys listen to the podcast you know the man crush that tim has developed with uh, mike lombardi he's right. that former gm for the browns he's like belichick's right hand man and he actually tweeted out something that i found incredibly interesting how sometimes your team is one injury away from being good mm. and it's like yo cutler went down jump start they look fired up Last year, he took them into the playoffs. He won those crucial games out on the road. Excuse me, on the road against uh, Buffalo. They won in there. And he's feeding Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, last year in the three games that uh, Matt Moore played, 15, of the 20, uh, 15 catches on 22 targets, three touchdowns over 200 yards. So he's given their best offensive player the ball, too. And I think Matt Moore is their, is their solution going forward, especially for the rest of the year. How do you go back to color? Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Um. So, I mean, I, I'm going Dolphins. Yeah, I'm going Dolphins as well. Yeah, I think me too. I'm I think go. Dolphins went out right, too. Yeah. I don't think they need the points. Fuck the Ravens. <laughs> Terrible. All a right. A layup bar or no? The, uh, I'm not going to do that <laughs> because, I mean, they are, you know, whatever. But I'm not going to say layup just yet. Dolphins are well traveled. Like, it's been a busy season for them, so I don't think it's a layup. But Yeah, but most, most likely, you know. It's a padlock, but that's See, not clicked. I was watching mm-hmm. last week. You guys were all in on the Chiefs and just bashing Cooper and everything. Like I know went the other way. Oh yeah, we I jump started. So yeah, but who the fuck saw that happening? Yeah, you, you know we're we're doing well. These Thursday night picks, so I feel like, <laughs> right, but we'll see. So we're going Dolphins plus three. Book it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>